Hey, what's up everybody? This is Adam with Reese Customs and we're taking one of the most hated woods on YouTube, which is pine, and we're making some beautiful furniture out of it. Um, why are we using pine? Well, one, it was more readily available at the time uh, of this project, and two, uh, the look of the pine fit the piece better than an oak or something like that would. Uh, it was, the piece is supposed to be a, kind of a more rustic, old, antique type look, and pine in this area is kind of what it would have been made out of. Um, and so that's why we used it. So you have some challenges when using stuff like this. One of them is we don't have anything, any boards wide enough for our side panels for our piece. So what I'm doing now is joining the edges of these boards so that we can glue them up into a panel to use for the pieces. Okay, so here I'm putting glue on all the edges of these boards. And when you glue up edge grain like this, long grain, um, the glue makes a suitably strong bond. You don't need any additional uh, fasteners or anything in there. And so I'm just gluing all these panel, all these pieces together into a panel. And I'm not going to show all of them. I had to do four of these total. I'm just going to show this one just because it gets repetitive. But uh, we just clamp it, make sure it's everything's nice and flush. All the boards are nice and flush, and let it dry. So now we got the panel dry. I'm cutting it down to size, and these pieces were 54 inches. Uh, the total height of the cabinet was 60 inches, but the sides were 54. You'll see, and 27 inches deep. So just rip it down. Now um, I'm cutting the shape on the top of the cabinet. It's got this kind of angled shape and then it goes back. I'm just rough cutting it now with a jigsaw. Uh, and here I am cutting a rabbit in the back of the panel so that the quarter inch plywood can sit flush in the back and not be seen if you look at it from the side. Um, you can just see the little rabbit in right there. So I did that with all four panels. So now um, I'm taking the panel with the shape at the top and just kind of tracing it so I can rough cut the rest of them and we will uh, sand it all down get it nice and flat because we're getting ready to cut dados in it and uh, we don't want it wobbling on the table saw or anything like that so when I set up to cut these dados uh, and designing the piece I have it so that the dividers are equal distance from each end so basically I can cut uh, set the fence cut a dado flip it around cut a dado on the opposite end and if I do that with all the panels all the dado should line up exactly and it just makes it easier I have half the amount of uh, fence movements to do so set the fence cut it flip it around cut it again and so on until I get all the dados cut into the panels um, you can see there they are and so now that they're cut, I took my laser and uh, designed the front of the panel exactly how I wanted it to be. And I'm just using the quarter inch plywood uh, like a template for the flush trim bit. And just getting one panel perfect and then I'll use that panel to uh, flush all the rest of them up. So I'm using the first panel I cut like a template for the rest of them. So now I'm cutting up some three quarter inch plywood for all the dividers. And there's a bunch of dividers in this thing you'll see shortly, but this slide on my table saw just made this so much easier. Um, I mean, you can certainly do it without it, but it was just super nice to have. So I'm just ripping these things down. And now I'm laying out the dividers that will be in these dividers. So it's a lot of dados, a lot of cuts, a lot of stuff I had to line up, and uh, a lot of careful planning on these. So now I'm uh, making our edge banding for those panels. Um, I went with a thicker edge banding um, instead of the normal, you know, real thin piece or whatever, just because some of them we're going to have to cut into, and two, it just looks better. Uh, so these are like the same thickness as my plywood, but maybe like an inch uh, wide or deep. 
And so that's all the edge bend. I just got it stacked up together and I'm cutting it to uh, rough length, not exact length, because I'll trim it up later when it's on glued on the panel. But uh, this, this is the process, basically just put some glue on the front, stick a edge banding piece on, and nail it in. All right, so now I'm cutting the panels to size. These are the slanted dividers, and I have to cut them to uh, length and then cut that angle on them. And that angle is 20 degrees. That's what matches the front of that cabinet. So uh, I'll cut those, and then I didn't show it. Look, it's sanding. Everybody loves sanding, right? No, but uh, I didn't show it on those slanted pieces, but I did put edge bending on the fronts of those too. Every, everything had a piece of edge bending on the front of it. So we're gonna get all the panels sanded up before we cut those dados. And here we go, just cutting all the dados in these. I did them the same exact way uh, where I can cut it one side against the fence, flip it around, and then cut the other dado. So, you can see that here. It just makes it way easier when everything's symmetrical like this. And now for the center ones, they work the same exact way. And you can see they're all spaced equally. Now these are the dividers that are going in the uh, slanted portion and I had to cut that same 20 degree angle on the front of the edge banding. And you can see that's a subdivider you can see that uh, hopefully you can see that that angle on the front of that matches the angle on the front of the divider and it was a lot of careful planning so here I'm uh, gluing up the I guess you could say subdividers in the dividers and I'm making it in section so that I can put it all in the outer panels in sections just to hopefully make it a little bit easier which I found out it wasn't that much easier but uh, basically I'm gluing these down into the bottom panel and then check and make sure it's good and now I'm putting some glue in the top panels and see these two pen the top and bottom panels on this set have the 20 degree angle cut into it um, so I'm gluing that up putting it in we'll hammer it down tight and luckily everything lined up just because we're real careful and then I'll take some nails and uh, just brad nail those in until the glue dries and set that out of the way and then here's the top piece uh, the top section of the dividers so these are flush on the front they're not angled um, so I'm putting those in same as before getting them all pretty flush as flush as I can they should work out pretty close because uh, the width the depths are the same so just have to finesse that on hammer it in get everything nice and flat and flush and for this I just put some screws in these um, I don't remember now why I didn't use brads I use screws instead but either way it's just to basically hold it until the glue sets up so I had to do two of these, two each, because there's two cabinets. So now here's one of the side panels laid down and I'm putting glue into the dados on the edges of the side panels. And then now we get the fun task of putting all these heavy other assemblies, whatever you'd want to call it, into the side panels. So it was a little tricky um, just because wood moves a little bit and they took some uh, coercing to get in the right place. I had to put some clamps on them just to hold them down. Um, but it still came out good because we took the time to measure and I was pretty happy with it. It was a little bit of a struggle but it wasn't terrible. But I didn't show that centerpiece that's gonna have two drawers in it um, but I made it just the same way as the other ones but you can see on the bottom of that panel it's got two slats because it'll have or two dados because it'll have two dividers in the bottom part uh, but just two drawers in the center part 
So the reason I did it in these sections is because the angle changes. And so if by doing that center section separately, I only had to put a 20 degree angle on the fronts of those. And then they would made up to the flat angles on the upper and lower pieces. And it just looked, it was a better looking transition that way than trying to figure out how to do all of this kind of as one piece. Um, and I certainly could have uh, glued the, what are vertical dividers now, they're, if the cabinet stand up is horizontal dividers, but I could have glued them to the side panels and then put the vertical dividers in there. But I was worried that things might shift and it might not go as good, so I just did it this way. And so once that was dry, this is the other side panel. Um, I removed the clamps obviously and I'm just kind of test fitting this and seeing if everything's going to go okay which it was a little bit of a struggle but uh, I believe I may have already put glue in that panel and so I'm just clamping it down I'm working it into the groove into the dados that are cut and things never go 100% perfect this was one of those times where it's just Stuff was shifted a little bit. I just had to kind of wiggle it and had to get it into place. And when you're working with so many different dados and different pieces of wood, sometimes you run into this. It's not a huge deal because they were pretty close. I just had to move them just a little bit. And so you can see I'm kind of squeezing in the panels just to get the dados lined up. And uh, putting one on the end. I'm waiting to put that bottom divider in in a minute. But uh, get everything down nice and flush. Clamp it all and uh, let the glue dry on this one. So now the glue's dry on that. Now we got the very bottom divider and that one has two more dividers within it. So I'm putting that in place. That one went in place actually really good. And this is the uh, other dividers that even has even more dividers in it. So. There was about 60 dados uh, per cabinet, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, it was a lot. So, a lot of stuff, a lot of room to go wrong, um, and a lot of uh, nerve-wracking assembly, hoping everything lines up correctly. And it, it ended up lining up really good, so I was happy with that. So, this will just kind of get those center ones into place it was a little bit of a struggle but getting those to line up and then getting the one on the bottom or the end in this image that's the bottom of the cabinet but getting that into its grooves uh, and everything was lined up everything was tight and then put some clamps on it and I run some screws into the uh, uprights from the bottom because you won't see them but so this next thing so this is actually two by fours that I cut down sanded down flush on one end and now I'm gluing them up. This is going to be the legs. I didn't have any material thick enough, so I had to make some. So I'm just gluing up uh, two 2x4s two together to get me a, some thick enough stock to work with. And uh, it's important to make sure the two faces you glue together are flat so you don't see any kind of discrepancy when the pieces, you know, cut to shape. So pretty much just glue that up and set it to the side for now so the glue can dry so I can work on something else. So now you can see my table saw blade is tilted. So these are the subdividers and I didn't show making those because they're exactly the same as plywood and a uh, edge banding. But I had to cut 20 degree angles on the fronts of all those too and these are the little shelves that go in. And you can see by cutting the 20 degree angle on it, it matches the angle on the rest of the cabinet. So I'm just knocking that in the test fit. And so I had to make all of them the same way. It was uh, 10 of them per cabinet with the angles on them. So now I'm just kind of gluing them in. It was a very snug fit. So I just put glue on the back side of them and just hammered them in flush. Okay, so now it's time to make all of our drawer boxes. And um, there was about 50 drawers in total. Uh, so now I'm ripping down half inch plywood and I'm making these a little bit different 
than a traditional drawer box. A traditional drawer box would have uh, all four sides and then a drawer face on the front of it. With these, the face of the drawer is going to actually be the front of the box. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But um, I'm just ripping those down and then now I'm cutting them to length. And so for 30 of these, I had to cut the same 20 degree angle on the front. Um, of the boxes themselves and that is so that the drawer face sits flat against the cabinet you can see that's the box pieces this is just during mock-up and so for the drawer uh, faces I use my CNC and I routed out grooves to accept the half inch size and quarter inch bottom and then I use the chamfer bit just to chamfer them and give them a nice uh, clean look so I had to go through all the sides on all of those. And uh, I laid them all out in their respective spots and had them all labeled which one went where so I'd keep up with them. And then it was time to sand them all. And so for these, I am staining the drawer faces, but the boxes, I want to leave the plywood just so there's a contrast there. So I'm going to have to sand and stain all the fronts then glue them into the boxes and then clear coat everything all together. Now we stain each front and then once the stain is dry, then we'll glue the boxes into the fronts to make the complete drawers. And then we'll have to go back and clear coat all of it, the insides and everything. So now I'm coming back to the uh, feet. This is just the two by four pieces that I, uh, glued up and now I'm just ripping them all square into square stock and you can see that they're nice and uh, nice and clean because we jointed those faces that glued together so now they just look like really clean blocks of pine and so I'm cutting them to the final dimensions and these are a little bit longer because there's actually two legs in each one of these long pieces and you'll see in a second what I'm talking about, if that doesn't make sense. But I'm just taking off a little bit at a time, getting them all nice and square, making sure they're exactly the size I want them because we're gonna, uh, we want all eight of them to be identical. So now I'm just measuring out, made a little mark on my saw, put a stop block there, and now I can cut all of them and make sure they're all exactly the same length. And I like using stop blocks because it makes things way easier. And I'm just cutting them all to length. And so now I'm making a little jig and you'll see what this jig is for shortly, but basically just taking a scrap piece of plywood, block of wood and uh, gluing and nailing that on there. And then some little support pieces here. I'll uh, glue and nail on there as well just some brad nails and you'll see what that's for but uh, I'm gonna put this clamp here this, I thought this was pretty slick I, I thought of this kind of on the fly and I thought it was a pretty neat pretty neat idea and I've, I mean I'm not the inventor of this I mean I've seen jigs online like crazy but uh, I was pretty proud of that idea so now I'm joining together the skirt of the base and you're probably thinking what in the world do you have a domino why didn't you use that on all the cabinets instead of cutting all those dados well that's because i didn't have the domino when i started this build and i purchased it later so i wanted to use it for this bottom and it made things super simple to go together and i hate that it took me so long to finally get one but now that i have one i mean it just it made things pretty sweet so there is the base uh, assembled it's just, it's not glued up yet. It's just dry assembled. And so here's my jig. And basically what this does is it allows me to cut an angle on one side of the leg, flip it, cut the same angle on the other side of the leg. And that gives us a really nice looking tapered leg. And you can see the difference, how much cleaner and better looking that little taper gives us on the base than just the blocky straight base. So that's what all that was for. Now I just have to, uh, you can see some pocket holes I put in there, and that's to pocket hole the base onto the cabinet. I glued and pocket hole that on there. But uh, we have to sand all of it, and I actually sand and stained and finished 
the base completely before I put it on the cabinet just because it was way easier that way but uh, this is pretty much how easy assembly went with the dominoes um, everything was sanded glue the dominoes in put some glue on the apron pieces skirt pieces whatever you want to call it and uh, it just went together like a puzzle like it was meant to be so that was pretty sweet so I use regular clamps on this one on the other one I had one of those ratcheting clamps that's got the four little corner pieces and that worked way better um, so I used that on on that but either way works as long as you get it clamped up until the glue dries so now one of the final pieces to make is the door faces so the bottom there's doors on the bottom of the cabinets and so I'm just showing another method if you don't have the joiner so you can take two pieces of wood you can see there's a gap in between them um, you just we're going to use a table saw as a joiner on this this trick so basically I just write a U and a D a up and a down and then I'll run the boards one through the table saw with the up the U facing up and one with the D facing down that's just to compensate for any variation in the table saw but uh, it gives a nice clean edge so basically uh, clamp those together let those dry making more panels this is a theme in this but you can see how good that table saw did of, of getting a nice joint clean edge and uh, we're going to take these over to the CNC and we're going to cut uh, grooves in it so it mimics the look on the rest of the cabinet and so it looks like little drawers um, and now I'm just cutting them uh, to exact size so that they fit in the in the cabinet and I could have done this on the CNC but I wanted to be able to fine-tune it and so I mean it was just easier for me to do it with a table saw just because it might not be a hundred percent the same uh, between the cat between all four doors on the cabinet so uh, now I'm just taking and putting the hinges in and what I do is just lay the hinge on there trace around it and then I will go over my pencil line with a chisel to kind of separate the wood just to get the cut started and then I have a little quarter inch uh, bit in the router and I just kind of go in and route out all the extra material and I mean it's pretty pretty quick and easy way to do it this way I mean there's you could chisel the whole thing out if you wanted to but it's just easier now I just have to clean up the little corners because the router bits uh, rounded obviously so I just clean up the corners with my chisel lay my hinges in there and make sure everything fits perfectly and then we do the same thing with the cabinet so I'm just kind of setting it in place and marking uh, on the cabinet and I'll use an extra hinge just to lay out where it goes and same process I'm not going to show it so now it's time for sanding and I didn't show a lot of this I just because uh, it's boring but basically I sand everything flush all the uh, brad nails that held the face frame on got filler and all that stuff too but I'm just using the uh, Bosch you guys know that Bosch is uh, one of my favorite tools one of my favorite sanders but using that just to get everything nice and flush and I sanded the whole cabinet up to 220 uh, I didn't show the staining and finishing because that's just like staining those doors I just rubbed it on and spray finish uh, on the outside just like all my other projects uh, but I did want to show this and so this is real time this is sanding the outsides and I have uh, the palm sander 220 grit uh, and I got the vacuum on there and this is about the speed I go because one of the one of the bad things about pine is how soft it is and it will leave a lot of curly cues and a lot of sanding marks so you really got to be careful when you're sanding and I'm trying to watch it I'm trying to go nice and smooth and and slow and make sure I get all of those little sanding marks out um, because once you put stain on it they'll show up terrible I mean it, it just it looks awful and there ain't much you can do about it then except for try to re-sand it and and all that so just I just want to show how much time you have to take uh, sanding and like I said I'm not showing the finishing process I basically I rub hand rub stain over the entire cabinet both sets of cabinets and then I sprayed all the cabinets with spray finish 
and uh, then after that it was just up to assembly um, one thing I didn't show was the top piece it's a little hidden compartment in the top you'll see it in the final picture but it's basically just another panel glued up just like the other ones uh, and it had a piano hinge across the back that was kind of a last minute decision because I had so much wasted space up top I just wanted to make use of it so I made kind of like a little hidden compartment but you can see uh, still sanding on this one panel and barely made it halfway so it's with pine you really got to pay attention to how much uh, how you're doing your sanding so that was the point of letting this play excruciatingly long and same sanding so many times so after all the finishing here we go so this is the cabinets in place now realistically did I have to spend that much time sanding the sides well no they're not ever going to be seen but I didn't know that but uh I mean I would have treated it the same either way but you can see all the doors I put those little uh letter tag things on there for the pools I, they look really cool the two identical cabinets so this homeowner wanted to put cabinets beside their fireplace instead of like standard built-ins and I thought it was really cool it really went with the uh, rest of the decor, the decor in the house um, so that's it uh, made out of pine the hated YouTube wood but I think they turned out beautifully um, if you like this uh, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and you can see more and uh, leave, me, leave me a comment let me know what you thought thanks and have a good one